heard a term called senioritis, have you all ever heard that term? Yeah. <laughs> is it a myth or is there really a senioritis or did it not infect you? Yeah. This is definitely true, <laughs> but um, it's, it's all a matter about balancing things out. Um, just try to keep up with what you like to do, so if there's a specific core class that you like doing, make sure you're taking that class seriously. I am currently in English and student council, those are my main two focuses right now. So I like balancing it out academically with English because I just love literature but I also love the fun side of school, which is student council and everything we do. So I think as long as you keep it balanced, your head's kept straight and you just have a good year. Y'all sound like you're really engaged students, um, but what seemed to be work for you the best in terms of learning? Um, what, what, what seemed to really help you the most uh, in your uh, academic experience? Well, I would always try to get help from like internet sources, well, credible internet sources, actually. Um, and you know what that is. Yes, okay. definitely. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andres. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would always try to go online for extra help because my teacher would cover things like in depth. Mm -hmm. But if I had any other like deeper questions that they couldn't understand actually or answer it in the way I could understand, I would go online because there are so many different sources available to you that there's bound to be one that you were able to understand. So that really worked for me because there's so many different types of people that can understand certain things only. Okay. What's yeah. been most effective for you in your learning in academics? To say it would be uh, teachers. When you have a teacher that can engage you actively through lectures and all that, it makes learning the class a lot easier. Um, luckily, I've, at Hebron, you know, we have a great teaching staff and it's made it, it's really easy when they can make it seem like you're not you're learning, but it's in a more of a sense where you don't feel like it's a chore. You're doing it because you enjoy it, and they make you enjoy it. We're gonna, if you could change one thing, I'm just kind of flipping the, the previous question. If you could change one thing <coughs> during the course of time um, that would have made things better for you, what, what would you say? Um, I wish my schedule was a little bit more flexible, actually, because I've been taking an orchestra for the past you know, seven years, so that's always been a, a time-consuming class for me, and that has actually taken maybe a little bit away from my academic opportunities. I wasn't able to like, sign up for certain AP classes, but I would study them outside of school, actually. But I really wish that my schedule would have been more flexible, that more classes were actually available to me so that I could have taken advantage of more of the resources. Okay, Ernesto? Probably one of the things I would have changed is just prepared for college a little bit faster or a little bit before time. Um, it's just great to be able to know all your options before you make one decision. So I think that's probably the one thing I would have changed. All right, good, Sergio. I'd probably go on the same kind of vein of that and say more, for me at least personally, it's more like time management and learn how to do that sooner rather than, because it really just kicked in for me junior year when I had a huge course load. And it would have helped earlier to have known how to, you know, how to divide your studying time <coughs> and all that. Because I know that's the most important groundwork for all your schoolwork is being able to cover everything thoroughly while not, you know, studying all night for a sense, being able to do everything efficiently. Fantastic. So are the three of you going to college next year? Yes. yes. Sir. yes have sir. you chosen your college? Yes, sir. Yep. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to be going to the University of Texas at Austin. I'll be double majoring in physics and astronomy, actually. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're going to uh, um, also be doing music as well while yes, you're there? Yes, I'm going to try to do a non, <coughs> join a non-major major orchestra there because I actually have a roommate. He's going to play the viola, and we're going to try to see if we can sneak in a non-major orchestra because it actually they actually allow non-major orchestra. They encourage people to get more involved in the orchestra and be in a diverse sort of organizations and clubs. Right. And of course, UT has that great uh, um, observatory out at Fort Davis. Oh, yeah. That's one of the reasons I chose it, actually, because I love, I just love the stars and everything, and they have so many resources available to me. And yeah, I think I can really grow there. Okay. Where are you going to go? I'm actually going to UNT. Oh, fantastic. Yes, uh, they have a new business program and a new building. So they have a new building. Yeah, so I love that. And I went to go visit it, actually, I think it was about a month ago, and it was amazing. I just kind of fell in love with it. So I'm going to be majoring in accounting and minoring in business management. Great. And how about you? Uh, Baylor University over in Waco. And I haven't quite decided what I want to do. I've kind of narrowed it down to uh, 
maybe a pre-med with sports medicine, but you know, I kind of want to play around with if make sure that's the thing I want to do first. But right now, I'd probably say I'm 80% sure that's what I want to do. All right. Well, take your time. You don't have to rush on that. That's for sure. And I um, want to thank you guys for joining me. Great conversation and appreciate uh, you taking the time to come by. And I appreciate you joining us for this segment of Insights. Mm -hmm.